so you're ready to join the big leagues with Hoffler & Co. Typography. Hey everybody, Joe Workman here, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at the Font Pro integration with Hoffler & Co., which is typography.com, okay? Now, this is definitely the high-end service for typography, right? Um, it is definitely the most expensive option uh, that Font Pro integrates with. But Hoffler & Co. have some of the most desired and internationally famous fonts out there. For example, if you wanted to use Gotham, which is the font that was made famous during the 2008 Obama campaign, because that was the font that Obama used on all of his flyers, and you've seen it everywhere, right? And there's other ones like Whitney and Archer that are just extremely beautiful fonts that are internationally known. So, and typography.com or Hoffler does a little bit more than that, right? They have some, what they call screen smarts technology that basically customizes the font file for the device that your users are coming from, right? So that your fonts are strictly optimized for the device, right? And the, in the connections and everything, right? So they do a lot of work to assure that your fonts are loading smoothly and quickly across all devices on your site. So yes, it is the most expensive option that we have with Font Pro, but they definitely have some premium services and premium fonts. So let's jump in and look at Hoffler um, and how to use its interface. Now I'm not an expert at everything with Hoffler yet, right? But um, hopefully this general overview will give you uh, an a idea of how to implement Hoffler um, into Font Pro. So here I am logged into my uh, typography.com account. And you'll notice that um, when you log in into the dashboard, you'll see that you have projects. Now a project has two different statuses in Hoffler. You have development projects and production projects, okay? Um, we're gonna review what the differences are between those in a little bit, but essentially when you set up a new project, it's gonna be a development project, okay? Then when you're ready to finalize that project, um, we're gonna put that into production and that in in involves a few extra steps. Now I do have to say that browsing um, Hoffler's fonts aren't, isn't quite as nice as Typekit or even Google Fonts, right? Essentially you go up to the menu and you can see all of the fonts available to you, right? So if we go and view, let's say Archer, you see you can see a general page that definitely is using the font. At the bottom they have some suggested pairings with Archer, right? Um, you can go and view the styles, all the available styles for Archer, so you can see exactly the typefaces that you're gonna get um, if you add Archer to your library. Now in the Features tab, it really gives you some really detailed information about what kind of makes Archer unique. By reading through these features of all the various fonts, it's actually a great learning process to kind of help you uh, notice things about fonts and what makes Archer and other fonts unique, right? So I recommend really taking your time to look through these uh, feature sets for each font so you can make a proper decision on which font you wanna use for your site. Now, a quick note about buying fonts on Hoffler, okay? This was a slight learning process for me as well. Now, when you subscribe to Hoffler & Co, okay, or typography.com, you do not have full access to all of the fonts that they have available. This isn't like Typekit's subscription, okay? Their default subscription allows you to have five fonts in your library. This means that you can add five fonts for free to your subscription, okay? So that means once you go through the process to buy fonts, you can say, buy a font, which I'll show you in a minute, buy a font, then you choose the web font, and the first five fonts that you add or that you buy get added to your library for free. Now, any subsequent fonts, you have to purchase on top of that, right? So once you add a font to your library, that is it. You own that font as a part of your subscription. You cannot remove that font from your library. 
So this is very important that if you're gonna use this service, that you learn that you have to be certain, 100% certain that this is a font that you're gonna want because you cannot add it to your library and test it. I, I think this is fundamentally a flaw in typography.com to be brutally honest here, right? I feel that um, you can't really know if you want a font until you use it in your design, right? I would love it if they added the ability to use a font inside a development project, okay? And then lock that font in once that project goes production, right? I wish they did that. They don't. So be careful. Once you purchase a font and add it to your font library, you are locked in in that font. So you have to be sure that that is the font that you want. And is that hard to tell if that's a font you want because you can't test it in your designs? Yes. Okay. Now they have the ability, as you see, you can see what the text looks like, right? They have a try uh, button tab inside the font where you can type in a sentence and see what it looks like. Is that really using it inside your design and seeing if that font really makes your design work well? In my opinion, no. Okay. But the service does have a lot of good things going for it, right? It does have beautiful fonts. It does have the screen smart technology that, you know, really loads fonts dynamically for the device to make sure it loads faster. All awesome, okay? But you just need to know that this is a limitation, okay? Um, I will send them an email. Hopefully, they'll change this. Um, if they do, I'll make sure that I update this. But right now, um, this is a very strong point that needed to make sure you know. So let's get back to uh, the demonstration. Okay, so here we're back, we're still in the Archer, and I wanna go through and show you the buy process so that you understand this fully. You click on buy these fonts, and what you'll see is you'll go for show prices for web use only, okay? And what you'll see here, I, I still have some available font you know, selections in my library, so I can actually click this and purchase this and it will add it to my font library. So I, I can actually click and add this to my font library. But again, um, I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't know if I want Archer and I don't wanna be locked into it right now, okay? So I'm not gonna do that. If we go up to your account and look at your font library, you will see in my font library, I have Dydit and Gotham, okay? So I have full access to these two fonts in my library right now, okay? And there's a lot of type styles inside of these, right? So Dydit have, has a bunch of different things, 42 different styles, and Gotham has 12 different styles associated with each font family. So you do get a lot of, um, you know, type set or type styles with your um, each font that you add to your library. So let's go back to the dashboard and, and look at projects. So here we are back on the dashboard and looking at our projects. So let's go into this demo project that I created that's currently in development mode. When you create a new project, you can define what fonts you want to be added to that project. When I created this one, I, I only added this one particular uh, typeset. And then here you can choose exactly which uh, font weights and styles that you want to load for this project. Now, if I wanted, I can go ahead and add as many of these as I want. Do I want to add Dydit 96 to this project? Yes. And as you see, it has now added that font to my project. Now, typography.com has a lot of other really great options here. So for inside each font, I can go to character set and then you can define exactly which characters you want to display. So if I know in a particular uh, font face, I don't want number styles, I don't want capital letters, right? You can turn off a lot of this stuff to reduce the ultimate size of the font that gets loaded on your page, okay? Now what's really great is you can do custom character set like if you know you wanna use this font for just the main header on your page, you can load only the characters that you want for that font, which will make it super small and load super fast on your web pages. 
Now, once you've made all your changes, just go ahead and make sure that you click save changes. And then those will now be saved in your project. Now, another important note is that you have to configure the domains that will work for this particular project. Now you can add as many domains as you want. Okay. And this will only work on those domains. Now, if you do want to make sure that the fonts work inside rapid weaver, you have to make sure that you add local host as a domain for this project. Now, if we head over to the tools section for your project, you will see that the first tab here is called the CSS key. Okay. You're going to have to enter this into rapid weaver into the font pro stack so that everything works and ties everything together for you. So when we jump into rapid weaver and I reference the CSS key for Hoffler, you'll know that this is exactly what I'm referring to. Now, once your project is finalized and you want to move it into production, you're going to want to go to development mode. And then here you're going to want to say, publish this project to my server. And you can say, let's begin. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put in the URL to where the font files that you're going to download in a minute are going to be. For example, let's say I wanted to load this project on my fontpro.joeworkman.net website. Okay. What I would do then is I would create a fonts folder at the root of the website. I could then say generate the web fonts for this. Then what's going to happen is Hoffler is gen going to generate a zip file for us that contains a bunch of CSS and font files. We simply download this archive and then we need to upload the folder that we just downloaded to the folder that we specified on the server. And you're going to do this with your favorite FTP program. Okay. And once you've done that, you're going to confirm the installation. Now this project I just created for this demo video, so I'm not going to confirm the installation, but essentially uh, that zip file is a folder. You simply upload that folder to your server so that it is resides at this exact URL. Once that happens, you can confirm the installation and your project is ready to go into production. So here we are now inside rapid weaver and I've added the font family stack as well as a couple Hoffler and co font child stacks. Okay. Let's go through this first. Let's look at the text that's going to be used for headers. I created a label. So it's called headers. So I know that this particular font family I am planning on using for my headers. Now, if you'll notice Hoffler has something a little bit different, it has font family name a and font family name B. If we go back to my project setup inside Hoffler, you'll see that for this particular font, there are two font families. Here we have Didat 24A and Didat 24B. Okay. Those are the exact font family names that you're going to have to put inside Rapid Weaver. They need to be exactly the same. So just copy and paste these two font families into the font family name definitions inside Font Pro. Now further down, we'll see that we have our load CSS key. And I mentioned this earlier, you're going to paste in that CSS key from Hoffler into here. Now, just like Typekit and others, we do have a rocket loader option. The rocket loader for Hoffler though only supports foundation. So if you're not using foundation, you cannot use the rocket loader. And if you've already loaded uh, this particular CSS key, you can say already loaded. Now, this could either be you're loading it via another Hoffler and Co stack, or you've manually entered this into your site wide code options inside Rapid Weaver. You then define your default weight for, for this, as well as the default style. For this particular font, I'm only loading the 500 italic font. So I want to make sure that by default, it's going to set that font to be 500 weight and italic. Then of course you set your fallback font as well as apply it to something right here for ease of sake, I'm going to apply it to vault one. Now, if you see down here in the content, I have two headers. I have, um, this that says, this is my header. I then have a header that says Hoffler and co. If you notice, they are both assigned to font vault one. Now let's preview our page. You might notice that these look completely different, right? They're both set to use that 
font. Now, why does this one on top look so bad while this one down here looks beautiful? Now, if you notice here, the E's look correct, but the rest of the, the characters here are definitely not my font. Why is that? Well, if we look at the project, you remember earlier I talked how we can define character sets. So I knew for this Didit font that there were only specific characters that I was planning on using. So here I put in all the letters that I knew I was going to use for this particular typeface. And that's exactly what's happening. Only the letters that show up here will actually be displayed in that font on my web page. So if we head back to RapidWeaver, you'll see that the only letters that are common here are the E. So this is why this particular header is not working, but Hoffler and Co is, because all of the characters here are inside that character set that I defined when I set up my project. Now, if we look at the second one, this one's gonna be pretty straightforward. Here, this is I'm gonna be using for my paragraph text. And I defined my font family names. Again, these are gonna be exact copies from my project, from the font family inside my project. I've already loaded my CSS key from another stack, so I'm gonna set that to be already loaded. You define your default weight, so your, what your normal weight is, and then you define what your style is. So this paragraph text, it's gonna be normal style, okay? Um, and then you assign it to your, uh, your vault, and you're good to go. And if we preview our page again, you'll see that we definitely have beautiful typography now that is coming in from Hoffler & Co. And that's about it, everybody. That is how to use Hoffler & Co fonts in RapidWeaver, right, using Font Pro. It's really simple, right? There are a few gotchas in terms of making sure we add those fonts to your library, right? Don't just go willy-nilly and start adding fonts because all of a sudden you're going to run out. But Hoffler provides, like I said, beautiful typography that's going to load lightning fast on all your devices because of, of their screen smart technology, right? And of course, their font selection is beautiful. Some really internationally famous fonts there. So I hope you are enjoying Font Pro. Um, I hope that you're using this to your best ability to make your web designs even better and pop because the typography here is amazing. So um, I hope you're enjoying it and thanks for watching everybody. Bye.